This is the Mr. GM developer interview with Ian Hazakosis. I haven't watched this yet. Uh, we're just going to check this one out, and then we're going to get started on Mythic Arade. Oh, my God. This is going to be great. Here we go. Hello, welcome to another developer interview. I'm here with game director Ian Hazakostis here on this lovely Tuesday afternoon. Let's see what else we can learn about 10.1. Uh, Ian, how you doing? How's how's everything going? You know, how's the team? How's, yeah, everything. You know, that's really the, the kind of biggest yeah. question. I'm doing great. Um, super excited for Embers of Notharian, just, just a week away at this point. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, the, the team as a whole is, Ian looks all right. is in a really, is in a good place. And it's fun. I've seen you know, interviews where the man looks exhausted. He looks okay right the now. There's, a, there's like a positive feedback loop. There's a virtuous cycle. Um, and I want to thank, you know, you and a bunch of other creators, really the community at large. He's thanking for me. What? The like, positivity and optimism <laughs> around really. Dragonfly no for some, for giving us, for giving the game a second chance after you felt kind of burned by things during Shadowlands. But really, you know, burned by Shadowlands. for everyone Understate. to invest their time and our, our passion into building these worlds, you know, getting to see people enjoy it, getting to hear about their experiences and, and how they could be better, but couched in a, in a positive context makes everything better. Like, it, it's one of those things where, you know, when I'm having my morning coffee, before I'm technically starting work, before I'm just, like reading all about WoW across the internet, <laughs> checking out the various WoW subreddits and a YouTube no way. WoW creator feed and all That's of that. That's pretty interesting. And is that, like, is that energizing? Imagine or Ian go on, uh, going on Reddit and, you know, or uh, that WoWhead before like work. For where the team as a whole is. And so when we're going to, you know, scouring the internet and we're hearing a lot of I'm having a blast, but this one thing drives me crazy, as distinct from, you know, is there, is there a single competent developer over there at Blizzard? Um, it helps, right? And so it, it's overall you know, uh, exciting and can't wait to have everyone jump into this next big chapter. You're going to save a history. I guess, right, like, yeah. when, you, when you have, like, a positive <laughs> feedback loop, it's, like, motivating, right? Like, it makes you just want to, like, make the best game possible. And I've got to say, as you said, you know, Dragonflight's just been fantastic. And the cadence of content has been incredible as well. It's an interesting I, I want like, to say that uh, is a concept, just getting ready for work in the morning and then you're reading reviews of your work every morning before you start. It could either be good or bad. Come out like super quick, but I don't even think it Shadowlands has. Shadowlands is just probably really hard to get start work every day. Of content, it just feels that way. I mean, that's work, working as intended. So it's awesome to hear. And yeah, I think, you know, the, the feel we want to create is one where there's always something exciting around the corner. Um, not what we're here to talk about today, but, you know, spoilers, 10-1 dropping means you can probably expect to hear about 10-1-5 and Ooh. see that coming to PTR, Ooh. what that's going to be all about very soon after. They've been releasing so this shit be, hot and fast, man. It's going to be a really exciting month for WoW in general. That's exciting. I was actually going to ask that eventually, but, you know, you just dropped it on me. It's fine. Yep. Uh, <laughs> okay, so my first, uh, first us, question, and us. this is a big one, that... I already kind of know the answer, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask it. A lot of people have been curious about it. There's been a lot of, like, rumors and data mining and, oh, what's the and speculation and stuff about a potential uh, third spec for the Evokers, because obviously right oh, now we yeah, have two. Oh, no, the cheerleader uh, Is there spec. anything, I guess, we could oh, no. see for the class in the future? Is that something that's ever been in the pipeline as an, as an idea, potentially, or what's going on there? Um, well, there's, there's definitely no third spec in 10.1. Um, <laughs> where I, I, wish we were, I wish we were that good at hiding things. Maybe someday. <laughs> um, that would be fun, though. No uh, cheerleaders in time. Uh, I think, okay. you know, anything's possible in the future. Um, the way that we develop, the way that we, we just build WoW is, is very kind of unfiltered in terms of our development team's ability to put things in the game and tinker. And people who have been, you know, data mining, looking at data mining over the years, have, have seen countless examples of discarded experiments, tests, things that, you know, never yeah. make it to live. Sometimes, Sometimes you know, I feel like data mining is a bit too spoilery. I think is going to come out a couple of patches. I kind of wish we didn't know everything every time. Coming together, but whoops, they, we didn't remove all the vestiges of it before we made that. After we made that decision, so don't always you know read too much into every bits of every bit of data mining that you see. Um, but anything's possible down the line. You know, I think add it. We've give them a tanking a class. Sort man. of counts as adding a spec to a class. No, don't make it a support class, out. please. Um, it's something I could definitely see us playing with in general down the line. Amazing, that's exciting. So you're saying that the PvP Warfront map I found in Battle for Azeroth is coming out eventually, right? <laughs> oh yeah, actually, that, that's coming out next week. You haven't heard about that? <laughs> Excellent. Oh, thank God. The, the encryption's getting so good, Ian. It's just <laughs> amazing. Um, 
I guess kind of completely unrelated. So much stuff but this is one thing that's shot. been a it's been a personal thing for me. I think I asked uh, another developer about this as well. It might even be you. I can't even remember. But uh, reputation, especially legacy reputation, uh, for a lot of players is like uh, it's a bit of a gatekeep for alts. So for example, like I, I I'm pretty much a one kind of player guy, but you know I would probably mo be more inclined. I'm a one player to play guy too. Alts if a lot more things were account-wide, and one of those things being reputation, obviously. Uh, and, and and to be honest, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Like, I, I, I guess it's in a... I, I don't know. I, I feel honestly, like you progress that, and you don't really want to do it again. I don't even uh, look I don't know. at reputation. I, I, I guess the question is really, anymore. like... In terms of old rep. Is there... Are we... Exp you know, the kind of account-wide things that have been coming through the game, is reputation one thing that we could potentially see in the future? They removed the requirement the future, for uh, definitely. heritage armor, not, I believe. We don't, have, we don't have immediate plans, particularly regarding legacy reps. We're mostly focused on, you know, just the new things that we roll out, making sure those feel alt-friendly and not creating barriers. But de definitely understand the pain point for people who, you know, like if a brand new class comes out, you want to play an evoker, but that means leaving behind things that feel, you know, hard-won and tied to past characters. We know that doesn't feel great. Um, it, in general, the direction we've been moving as a team is you know tearing down those barriers between yeah, the characters. Yeah, a lot of account wide stuff has been opened. Player stand for themselves. Um, this is this is one of those remaining barriers. It, it's one I I do want us to get to, but it's not a. I, I do wish they just bring back the tavern system. The tavern system was so good because you just wear your tavern, you go run, uh, you go run a dungeon, you go grind out some shit, and no matter what, you're getting rep for the thing you want to get rep for. I thought that was a great system. I don't know why they ever got rid of it. Idiot short term. Awesome. Uh, that's fine. That's fine with me. Uh, I guess talking about 10.1, uh, cross faction guilds obviously coming in. I remember wearing your Scryer's uh, Fantastic, tab obviously, like shit. one thing that Getting really, that like, since cross faction came in, I think in 925, people have wanted, and now we're eventually getting it, and it, it feels good. It feels fun. Uh, I've tested it quite a lot on the PTR, which is nice, and I think people are going to really enjoy it, obviously, when it comes out. Um, I guess one thing that people have a little bit of an issue with that I've seen quite a lot as well, like, especially myself, is um, there's a couple, you know, things that are kind of, you know, limited with cross-faction right now. Uh, yeah. Number one is uh, outdoor world content, and the other is queued instance content. Uh, specifically, yeah. like, not even, like, you know, heroic dungeons or normal dungeons, but, like, things like time walking. Obviously, we just had the time walking event. That's right. It's yeah, little, time walking you know, was kind of shit. I would love to have do done it with my Horde friends as an Without alliance, being able but to cross that's not... Uh, something that was possible is you know opening up those those things in the future like something that's uh down the you but know, cam does the it pipeline. even work i don't know if it works the same way it used to I, yes um i think our, our approach to cross-faction play is kind of chipping away at 20 years worth of barriers doing so yeah. cautiously without breaking the time. game um, cautiously for a couple of reasons but partly just technical underpinnings and a lot there's just a lot to untangle in terms of different assumptions and different pieces of will the we game ever be able to run icc for you know, we'll never imagine cross faction cross faction play non queued instances ended up being kind of the you know best bang yeah, only the up to pandaria the, yeah you know, one of the areas of highest That's demand in terms of mythic plus or rating and also one of the most self-contained that we could accomplish so it's where we started um the, but also we want to be careful socially you know in terms of the lived shared reality of our of our game world it's, you know, it's, we, we want to make sure that being a horde or being alliance still isn't something. a barrier to playing with your real friends but we also don't want to completely eliminate yeah the distinction or the meaning of you could imagine like cross faction raids raiding a, a city world that is you know, so steeped in, in right like like and, imagine you're in stormwind and you got a cross faction raid raiding stormwind it would kind of be like janked be like what the hell's going on here why are these humans killing everybody along with these orcs I mean, you could go with the whole storyline that this guild is kind of broken off. They they don't side with either side, and they just do. They're like renegades. They just do whatever they want. You could say that, but uh, I can't imagine them ever allowing something like that. And, and just the, the underpinning. That's why open world content's a tough one. I think. Well, there's some concern still that you know if you're. But time walking should be wild, fine. You're a night elf, and you queue up for a dungeon, and suddenly you're in a group of trolls and orcs. It's like, wait, what? Like, what is this even? But also potentially not just <laughs> lore wise, potentially confusing if it's like. Well, okay, after I leave the group, I want to send one of them a tell, thanking them for the run, but I can't, because can't, yeah. they're the opposite faction, and we're not friends, we're not, like, yeah. like, there's a lot of just stuff to figure out along the way. Um, it's stuff we want to figure out. I, I, I don't know how they would do it in an open world. I can't imagine them doing it. sites is, you know, huge content that you're at least doing with a full group. Like, if you have a group of four friends, and you want to queue for time walking, why should, like... 
who's that hurting, right? Time Everyone walking there be, is, yeah. is opting into cross faction play. Yeah, that's something time walking allowed. should be. Want to have a small group of friends available. and spam dungeons to level? Why can't we allow that? I think those are the next steps we're likely to set our sights on and just continue kind of chipping away at what's also possible. like custom but group finder. The general group. Like if I want to do a world boss, I mean that should be something. I know open world we talked about is kind of tough. I don't I don't even know how they could do this, but like if you want to make a custom group or something, you can't cross faction it right now. I think they should still allow you to make the group and then if you do content that's not allowed for cross faction, you just can't do it. Direction we're headed is tearing down those barriers and Making Let's do quests to learn other languages. Yeah, that could be a, a way to what roll What set of values you most strongly identify with and the aesthetics and not functional ability to play with others. Awesome. Thank you for the answer. I, I appreciate that. It's, it's good news. Um, I guess sticking with cross-faction guilds, um, obviously one of the requirements for inviting a uh, opposite faction member is to be in a uh, Battle.net community or a friend, I believe, as far as I'm aware. Uh, what's kind of the reasoning behind that, I guess? It's probably uh, a systems-based thing. I mean, it's the same logic as being able to send someone a message or invite them to a party, right? It's slash invite and slash g-invite basically use the same logic in that sense. And it, it's the same kind of philosophical underpinning of this being a tool to allow people who have some kind of pre-existing connection to play mm -hmm. with each other despite faction. Uh, and, and some of that is also just to avoid confusion or, or traps of, you know, you're an alliance player walking around and get invited to a guild randomly and wait, it's a horde guild. And yeah. You actually can't do a bunch of stuff with these players, and right. like if you're a new player, you sense. understand all of that. Is that as an alliance to you versus I get, I, if you have, not as an alliance you know, player, but as a player who currently has no guild, presumably I get invited to a random guild like every day. What you're doing again, it's a step in that direction, and as you said at the start, very much a response to the media community request of, "Hey, cross factions, these are awesome." Furball, Furball, but I really wish that one. you know my friends who play on the opposite faction could have access to guild repair. The only language guild chat with us or whatever else. That's the primary thing we're trying to solve Technically, here. Technically, I would say, uh, I don't know what language the Blood Elves speak, but you got Void Elves and Blood Elves on both sides. Also Pandaren, right, on both sides. Now Drakthir, too. Those languages are cross-faction, technically. Okay, cool. Right? You know what? It's funny. I, I read it, like the announcement, and I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that doesn't really make sense. Like, why would they Caldora, do that? And you yeah. come and explain That's a cross-faction like, oh, language. Of course. <laughs> considering you got Void Elves uh, and Blood Elves. All right, on my next side. one, I, I can guarantee you no one's ever asked you this. Actually, they might have done. I don't know. Uh, Guild Tabards yeah, boy, is, is probably one of maybe the oldest systems in the game, the creation of Guild Tabards. Uh, will we ever see an update to that? Is that something that's Damn, on the radar? Damn, I didn't even think about that. It, actually, it, it is on the radar. Um, not, I, I, think I remember trying to make a play, guild back in like Vanilla like WoW. I still remember I called it Riders of Azeroth. Customization in general. Customizing the Tabard, general, trying to make it look like a dick like, or something. There's so much untapped potential there. You know, it is indeed. Creating very certain creative. backgrounds where yeah, certain almost, things would show. Like, I think on the uh, it's on very the uncustomizable. ETR, we need dick tap oh, yeah, for sure. Wow, <laughs> <I> completely, <laughs> completely forgot this existed. Um, I guess we we kind of touched on time walking a little bit. I guess uh, oh, uh, in general, I think you mentioned in a previous interview about like time walking zones as a potential idea as something down time the future. Obviously, zones. we've just come out of the time walking event that we had at the end of the year, uh, kind of uh, end of the season there, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, I guess. More of a I want to calling a strat on like, time Is there dungeon. much we could see in terms of time walking in the future? Uh, obviously, BFA coming up at some point, I presume. Mm -hmm. Yep, that, that that seems very likely. And then, yeah, I think yeah, we want to keep expanding time walking as as a layer of extra activity and a reason to go check out the Old content, last twenty yeah. years of World of Warcraft. Sometimes, yeah. you know, I, I think something we think about a lot is we have this vast, vast world, and of course, you know, the focus is on. The newest thing with the current loot and the new experiences to have but i like going I back and doing old shit though can, you know give people some reason to check out some things that depending on when they play it or when they started they may they have never really experienced properly the first time around um <laughs> all of that you know, makes sense so continuing to layer anything on you want raids and as you mentioned there's going to be a ton of ideally catch -up mechanics and sort of stuff to do world experience that when it might comes not out. be possible with the scaling tech that was accumulated real? along the way um that's that's you know all of that is stuff we want to do and so that you know ideally you know, some future world where it's missed time walking week, that means that there is dungeon, raid, and world activities to do that are mists related during that week. That'd be great. One thing they don't have thunder, yet is a right? raid for raid? every single time walking event. That's, I mean, usually we try to pick one of the most popular raids or iconic from the tier that feels like... Should be a, there should be a raid for each time walking. 
for each it is expansion. A good one. Uh, I guess kind of uh, kind of segueing into time. Yeah, come raid raids. with us, Rio. Uh, one thing that I you know I, I tried to do like community runs of time walking raids every time. Low I pixel old bus uh, One of the kind of issues that I have personally <laughs> with with the time walking raids and presumably a lot of other people is just like the way to kind of queue to them. So obviously, bef like right now, you have to create your group uh, and then you kind of it's talk to the so NPC confusing and go into to it. Me. it feels like a bit of an older way of doing it. Like obviously, for time walking, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like potentially there could be some some somewhere easier because Just I guess a time the walking issue tab in the uh, like dungeon slash raid finder, and we wouldn't really be able to replace them through the custom group finder. Yeah, but it it makes backfilling a, a huge pain. It's a, it's a technical limitation that we want to work around ultimately. You know, I think we're maybe being a little bit too clever for our own good in the implementation there. Time walking was built initially to support cute experiences, dungeons. And so, you know, to make it work for raids, it was like, well, how do we turn this into a cute experience, but also keep it one that's not random match made because it's more of a normal difficulty raid. And, okay. you know, random matchmaking might not have the success we want. I, yeah, really the right way for that to work would be for us to find a way where you can just walk in the instance and that's just, it's time walking week. I, I think, I guess a, a question something we saw with with faded raids at the end of shadowlands initially yeah was you know we debated internally on whether you should be able to toggle that on or off um, you should one of the concerns was oh it's going to feel you know frustrating for someone who just wants to do a nathria transmog run yeah. if it's faded that week and they can't they can't yeah I it's wonder, too like, difficult how I, i'm curious what your thoughts for the communities mm -hmm. would be if you know when it's burning crusade time walking week black temple is just time walking and if you want to go solo illidan hoping for warglaives Come you back another week, yeah. but this one week out of many, it's time walking only. Because that would let us <laughs> raise it forward and make it so that, yeah, you just summon your party and walk in. <laughs> but obviously, it has its downsides. Yeah, yeah, I could see definitely the downsides. I could see the upsides of it, of course, as well, just being able to wander in. But I don't know. I don't know how they would, how that would work. I guess maybe another difficulty. But then again, that would just be more bloat on the, on everything. But yeah, I'm not sure. I guess. Yeah, I guess people will respond to that uh, after this interview, I suppose. But, time yeah, time walking toggle thought. would be great. I don't, I don't um, know why. I guess. Kind of I don't know why Mr. GM wouldn't say be great. Just have it like a difficulty. Toggle no, on time walking. Completely away from. For sure, I'd forget this. to do it, and we'd walk <laughs> into the dungeon and clear the whole thing, random. realizing I didn't um, have time walking. Drag on. there. That's what uh, would happen. <laughs> have obviously some issues with bring Chromie with, outside. Issues, yeah, sorry. Uh, True. Well, they obviously have, you know, different rules for transmogs, I guess. Uh, and the dragon form obviously uses the kind of customization uh, and obviously with the shoulders and belt and things like that. Transmog on uh, Drakthir kind of Did we ever see sucks. any kind of expansion on transmog or visible transmog on the Drakthir uh, dragon form in the future? Um, it's certainly possible, but uh, I would say no. not likely in the near yeah. term. I They're not going to waste their time, time on something like reflects, that, I think. And I hate to lean on technical limitations as an excuse, but to some extent, it's the way our armor geometry works. Yeah, that would take um, so much work of, you know, to change up the armor to, to fit particular body shapes, and we have some clipping issues. In some it just seems like a lot of work others, with little reward. But there are you know, some aspects of just the Drakthir dragon form physiology that would make that extreme. So we, we tried to make it work for as many pieces as we could. Um, we're looking to improve our, our tech there all the time. You know, we want to be able to offer more in the way of, of customization. Maybe there's an AI out there that can retrofit gear onto so Drek here. Um, Maybe then they do it. Doors down the line, but I think in the near future, it's likely to as it is. Use yeah. AI. I guess you'd have to go AI. back through the entire game and mold all of the gear to fit that dragon body. It just sounds like a, a, yeah, it's pretty, a big undertaking. pretty heavy undertaking. Um, kind of sticking with races. Uh, so allied races, we've seen a couple of getting like little bits and pieces here and there. I think in 10.1, we have eyes for the Nightborn, uh, hair colors for Dark Iron Dwarves and skin colors and things like that. Uh, is that something that's going to continue Tuscar? going forward Ask him. throughout the uh, kind Ask of roadmap? Him, that, that, that's our intent, yeah. Just kind of, you know, just incrementally making changes, giving some love here and there. I think, you know, we have a long list of, of you know, tasks that our character artists are working on. It's something that's done in the background. It, it is inherently lower priority than making, like, the set armor for you know, the new tier or, right. you know, boss models or whatever Side else. Assignment. But we've set aside a certain amount of time, you know, every few months to add additional customization options. Um, we want to get to all the races over time. And just the more the, the more the better, right? There's no such thing as, as too much customization or too many options for too many people. Yeah, absolutely. As a, as a Dark Iron main, it was really nice Coming to see soon. just, a, you know, a few little extra hair colors and skin colors in there. It's always good. Um, cool. kind of shifting into, uh, something pretty, pretty random. Someone asked me this in the chat about it and I was like, you know what? That's a really good question. Um, so 
the reagent bank was added in 2014. I just, believe. just real quick on the customization. I still remember when we thought we were going to get skinny humans for humans. Never happened. I wonder if that's ever going to happen because all that is all that is is the uh, undead skeleton on a human, essentially. So it's not hard to do in terms of like putting armor on it, and there's no there's nothing different. There's just no exposed bones. I still wonder if we're ever going to get that. Brano, I want to say. Um, mm -hmm. And it Different hasn't been changes since this, then. Obviously, races. now a you know very you know heavy kind of profession orientated expansion. I guess in a sense, we have a lot of materials in our banks and in our banks. Uh, is you know is an expansion of the reagent bank so much something crafting you could see, uh, at any point? We need bigger reagent. It, it is um, not and not currently planned for like near term dragonfly patches, but it's actually something we're actively talking about. Just looking at the bank as a whole, um, reagent bank. You know, talk about speaking of other features that haven't been updated, you know, since Guild Tabards, the basic bank is actually pretty crusty these days, right? <laughs> the, the putting specific bags uh, of specific sizes in bank. your bank and having that be how it works, like the Guild Bank with just purchasable tabs that are just large, you know, rectangular grids of items, that feels like a a, a simpler approach overall. So I think updating the bank cohesively is something we are discussing. Um, that's sure. probably more future expansion material than just a patch, mm -hmm. but as part of that, guild, the reagent bank. Is Man, I haven't, I haven't used, I haven't been using the yeah, bank. I, I don't awesome. really I think use like it. Having honestly. it potentially account wide as well would be an awesome addition as well, with the reagents being yep. essentially account wide. Um, Man, these questions are all over the place. I'm sorry. Uh, the next one is about Vortex Pinnacle in Season 2. Really, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of just older WoW and things like that. Not to say I'm not a fan of new WoW, obviously. But, you know, I love seeing older things being brought into new things like Vortex Pinnacle into Mythic yes. Plus. Uh, I was a little disheartened before when hearing that Mr. Pandaria was a limit. And then suddenly we see Vortex Pinnacle coming in there. Uh, is there a, a limit? You know, could we see, like, a Ramparts Mythic Plus in the Ramparts, future? Ramparts, like, Dead there Mines. Actually, like, is there technical limitations give there? Give me or? Scarlet Monastery. Give me all the Scarlet Monastery dungeons in one Mythic Plus season, please. I need it. Uh, I just mentioned uh, Calling a Strathome. Gotcha. There's so many good old dungeons that I would love to Mythic Plus. Or is it more just, you know, maybe aesthetics potentially? Yeah, it, it, it's, there, there, there are no technical limitations. I think it's, it's a mix of aesthetics and just dungeon design itself. Uh, aesthetics is a piece of it. I think certainly... We, we have a wide range of. You know, They've been looks remaking over the years kind of the Warcraft, Scarlet Monastery armor and everything. Put a dungeon I just in the wish, seasonal rotation. Mythic um, plus Black Rock asking, Deaths. You know, Mythic plus players to spend one eighth of their time yeah. there, and if you're, you know, player coming to Dragonflight and then spending time in 2007 art, that maybe feels a bit jarring and out of step with the rest maybe. of the game. Maybe. But beyond maybe. that, it's. I don't think SM looks that how bad. Complex, and, and how much depth those dungeons had or didn't have. You know, I think Burning Crusade dungeons, most of them were designed around simple, like simple things, like simply holding aggro on a pack of mobs being a challenge for a yeah, wave format that's dungeons have to, would be a you tough know, one. tab shield slam or whatever their way through a big pack in shattered halls. Those things are, are trivial today, and if you look through the dungeon journal, many of the bosses from that era have fewer mechanics than some you know lieutenant mobs in dungeons today. And so. True the point where we'd have to like completely retool the dungeon almost from the ground up it starts to raise the question of like well if we're doing this why not just make a whole brand new dungeon that you a know, lot of dungeons were very tank and spanky and, back then offer all of that i kind of uh, missed those Pinnacle days was, i think an example of one that because of its setting our, our team agreed like yeah this this holds up this still looks pretty cool and it had very novel mechanics for its time and we're looking at the pool we, the, the team is looking for a mix of dungeons in terms of you know Forked, more open, linear, long, short, etc. Just to have a diverse pool. Good diverse. And diversity and length. What they were looking for to complement the other ones. That's Order great. Spinnacle ticked all of those boxes. I like where Ian's going with this. We ran it by art. They're like, yeah, this this is good to go. So we're excited to bring it back with some tweaks. Yeah, I think the the tweaks is is cool. I was just about to mention that. Like, obviously, we had What's the Cap? Jade What's up, and Cap? some changes there. It was really nice to see that kind of updated. I don't think, if, correct me if I'm wrong, I Mythic don't think Plus the other versions, Oculus. the older versions got updated. Yeah. It was just the Mythic Plus version. Is that how that works? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. I like that a lot. Um, and I was going to say, why Vortex Pinnacle? But you already answered that, so we're all good. Um, speaking of dungeons, uh, Mega Dungeon coming 1015. Super exciting. I think the best part of it is the fact that we don't really know anything about it right now. Uh, 
a lot of assumption on Farak, a lot of assumption on various other things. Uh, so Ian, just tell me what it's about. No, I'm joking. <laughs> will we know? Uh, will we have a rough idea? We of saw Farak's MPC got added in. At the end in. of 10.1. Added into the I think game. You will. Uh, really, just yeah. his yeah. message form. All, all will be learned in good time. Um, and I mean, really, even before you finish playing through 10.1, spoiler, <laughs> as I said earlier, 10.5 so. TR is going to be up shortly after 10.1. And so you'll have a very good idea of that. But part of the fun of Mega Dungeons has also often been that, you know, they're a little bit of a right turn. They're, you know, we have kind of our main, you know, kind of core narrative track that runs through the raids, runs through the zones. Um, the Mega Dungeons, you know, Operation Megagon, Tazavesh, they're, they're tied into the overarching narrative, but they're a fun chance for the team to just really offer, offer a change of pace. And, Scarlet and Monastery, Mega Dungeon, do it. The world that we're navigating. Do it. Such a tease. I, I just have no idea now. I guess we'll find out uh, pretty soon. Um, I guess uh, another question that is not about that. It's about dragon riding, I guess. Uh, so full transforms. We've seen a few of those come in. We've had the uh, the gladiator skin, the Razagest skin. I believe we have a new skin with uh, Abarus. I yeah, with the raid. A, one I'm going to get it, there. man. Uh, is that something we'll see potentially retroactively um, added? So we've seen some mounts come in. I think the Collector's Edition mount and the one from Wrath of Lich King, the kind of like level of Death Knight mount, uses the same rigging, I believe, as as the Dragon Riding mounts. Is that something we could potentially see expanded on uh, in the That's future? That's what I'm saying, man. I think, you know, down the line, especially as we move past Dragonflight and the Dragon Isles, we're going to figure out, you know, how Dragonfly, how yes. Dragon Riding fits into the world at large. How Dude, I've been saying it. I've been saying it. I've been saying it. I've been saying it. if they bring, they're going to bring dragon riding into Azeroth, and the way they're going to do it is they're going to just put all the skins of your dragons on the current Drake skeletons. So, and they have them all covered essentially. They have the Slither Drake, they have the uh, Windward Drake or whatever. They have your, you know, your, the classic looking Drake. I forget what the hell it's called. The one you know with the four legs and shit. And they have the Proto Drake. They're all covered. So all you do is take the skins of all the Proto Drakes and put them on the new Proto Drake skeleton. Bam. All proto drakes can do dragon riding now. I've said it before: when they unlock dragon riding for all of Azeroth, there's no way it's going to be for all mounts. It's just going to be for dragon mounts, because they can't re. Uh, they'd have to retool the way all the other dra all the other mount types fly. For example, like the flying horses, uh, the vortex-looking guys, um, flying pigs, like anything that's kind of weird that flies. That's not going to be dragon rideable. It's still going to fly the regular way. But all dragons will be able to dragon ride. Cloud Serpents, well, they fit the Slither Drake. The Cloud Serpents fit, fit the Slither Drake uh, animations. All they got to do is, you know, it's not going to have wings or whatever. You know, but, but it, it fits the Slither Drake. Traditional flight fits into that picture, I think. The disc certainly will not be able mounts, to dragon right. There's no reason why they wouldn't be able to I think it's going to have to be a dragon. The right now is, you know, on this limited set, the special collection and upgrading customization that you're doing through the dragon the dragon flight system awesome yeah i was gonna say actually just a random tidbit i love the uh the winding slither drake i think it's i i didn't think i was gonna like it but i ended up absolutely loving it and i think it might it's animations one, are so really nice big fan of that uh kind of a one one last big question then i got a couple quick fire as we finish up um traders tender uh as far as i'm aware is the first account-wide currency to use the currency tab uh, which is awesome, and I love to see it. Uh, is that something we could all. potentially see with other currencies in the future? Uh, because it makes life a lot easier than having some item that we have to trade over or whatever like that. Uh, yeah, yes, definitely. I think it's something you know, something we're going to evaluate on a case by case basis. But when there's something that really we just what want to be an account wide progression, <laughs> it's a perfect fit. I don't know why, Sam? I just available. read that as what about the dicks? And like, what flying dicks do you have? Talk about the love rock. Yeah, it's so cool. Yes. It's awesome just to be able to jump across and, and be able to progress that. Um, all right, so quick, yeah. quick fire questions. Couple of these. Dick uh, riding will so, be something else. Siege that, of that's Ogrima not, skip. That's not a game. Skip uh, for older, longer raids. It's dragon riding. Uh, is that something we could see? It is certainly something we can see. The siege is one we hear a lot because it is, I think, the most bosses of any raid in, in WoW history, and it's it's pretty linear. So that that that, that could be a long slog. Um, that, that that that's something I'll, I'll definitely bring back to the team for us to look at. Awesome. Uh, Battle for Azeroth content, being able to queue for it solo, so things like Warfronts. I know Island Expeditions you can, uh, but Island why is Expeditions. That, why is anybody and I think queuing other, for like, Battle Island Expeditions content is a little harder to solo, especially Mythic mode, why uh, would just you because do that? due to mechanics, things like in uh, Old Year have some one shot mechanics, even if yep. you're solo. Um, I know obviously yep. it's, it's legacy content, but. 
No, I mean that that uh, certainly for BFA, you know, it's around the time where okay, as mounts baseline, are always justification. The, like the rates become so level numerically and like so level by a you know, majority of the population that <laughs> Jesus, wants to do it. Really hate me. We'll do a pass <laughs> to, to kind of smooth out mounts and mogs pass from the islands. Okay, brick, brick walling that. So you know things like I know Mithrax is basically impossible. What's the best looking mount mechanic. from the There's islands? A couple of bosses. I um, never paid attention fights. to it that you know you have to spread out from each other in order to do which again becomes impossible to solo um like queen's court uh eternal palace is another one that comes to mind so i think not in 10 1 but soon after probably like probably 10 1 5 not like 100 percent set in stone yet but probably 10 1 5 we take a pass through the bfa raids to smooth out the mechanics that make it unsolvable then the rest numbers is just you know just gear right every new tier of gear is going to make that easier and easier gear out um Things like LFR and Mythic Slap and it on the table. BFA raids are pretty That's how you do old cards now. I'd expect that Mythic is more broadly doable. There's soon. a recolor of the plate um, Firelands gear. Oh, interesting. First part of the question Warfronts is a tricky one. Um, that's one we have to talk about more. It's just like the way the content was built. Um, it's built for like a raid. It's like it, it was not, it, it never contemplated solo queuing for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are be at different places like, at different I, at the same time. You didn't think how they would even work. Yeah. Uh, but understand that you know, there's a desire to be able to access everything that was out there. I want to see what we can do to make that happen. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, I've got probably two more. They're going to be super quick. Uh, LFR Shadowlands. Could we have a way to queue for that soon, potentially? Oh also likely to come five. Yeah. Oh and my God. I just Allied threw up a little bit in my mouth. Is there there any, do any Shadowlands changes content? to those in the future for newer players, I guess? LFR Shadowlands. Um, we have, so, trying to for call. I, mean, I think we, we've generally been removing and smoothing out, you know, the, this, removing many of the restrictions, smoothing out the process. But I think what sets Allied Races apart is still, you know, the, the sense that you have quest. Under, understood who they are in some sense, play the unlock quest line. So for a true new player coming to the game, um, if you're beginning an Exile's Reach, like that experience is designed for the, 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 the core races. As time passes, though, we understand that, like, you know, this meant something back in Battle for Azeroth, and this was a new race that was newly introduced. But some number of expansions later, they're just a race that lives in Azeroth, and I understand that it's harder to maintain that distinction. Um, it, no, no immediate plans, but it's something we talk about, and I, I would not be surprised if, you know, down the line in a future expansion, we see a path to just roll allied races as we know them into Make them regular the baseline races. experience. And maybe preserve their quest lines as maybe you know, tied to their heritage armor or something like that. Awesome. Well, yeah. I think that's that's okay. all we've got time for. You know, I really appreciate the answers. Uh, really great. Honestly, just I don't know. You just he's gonna he's so gonna finish the interview without asking about, about Tuscar. Talk about World of Warcraft. You know, it's just wonderful. Oh no, so, I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for we the great talk questions. about allied races. No Tuscar fun. question. Thank you very much. Have a have a wonderful day, and I'll yeah. Good luck. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to ten one and <laughs> good luck with ten one five. I'll yeah. be there on the PTR trying yeah. out things to make it done. Tuscar and Beskar. That's required. Awesome. Me too. Awesome. All right. That's what I would Take ask care. if I was doing Bye. this. Bye. Nice. Nice. Interesting interview. Nothing like groundbreaking revealed in it. Uh, he did talk about the 10.15 coming soon, which was pretty cool. Uh, crazy to think about.